Hey, are you dumb? Would you like to be smart? Well, if I got some good news for you, you can buy pills that will help you be smart. There's no scientific evidence to back this up, but I know you're going to buy them anyway, because, well, for real, selling brain boosting supplements has got to be the easiest job in the greater snake oil industry, because you're targeting people who by their own admission aren't the sharpest crayons in the box. When it comes to people like Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan fans, I have not the most sympathy uh, because they're awful people. But unfortunately, supplement companies also target decent people with actual disorders of the brain like Alzheimer's, which is why it's nice to see new research coming out that definitively states that a lot of this shit just does not work. The Global Council on Brain Health is a group of brain experts gathered by AARP, formerly known as the American Association of Retired Persons, one of the largest special interest groups in the country that does loads of good stuff to protect the health and safety of older people, generally people over the age of 50 or so. The Global Council produced a meta-analysis of research on supplements and how they related to brain health. They specifically looked at the following supplements, uh, vitamins B, D, and E, uh, omega-3 fatty acids, fish oil, coconut oil, huperzine A, caffeine, nicotinamide riboside phosphatolicerine cur- curcumin flavonols, coenzyme Q10, ginkgo biloba, that one I know, and apoequorin, which is a protein derived from the jellyfish, because you know who doesn't get Alzheimer's? Jellyfish. Despite the relative brain health of jellyfish, the council's uh, number one piece of advice following their research was buying supplements to benefit your brain health is likely a waste of your money. One huge problem was that many supplements had little to no scientific research to back them up at all. Uh, this is because companies realize they just don't need to do it. The FDA doesn't require it. They don't care if a supplement does what it says on the bottle because they don't consider it real medicine. They only care that it's not going to directly kill a bunch of people. Uh, although half of Americans surveyed by AARP didn't know that. So why do the research if you don't have to back up what you're saying, if people are just going to assume that the research has been done? You're just wasting money and you might leave a paper trail that proves your supplement doesn't actually do anything at all. When research has been done, it's by and large inconclusive. That's what a Cochrane review found back in December. Uh, Though decent studies were hard to find, they, quote, did not find evidence that any vitamin or mineral supplementation strategy for cognitively healthy adults in mid or late life has a meaningful effect on cognitive decline or dementia. But Rebecca, I hear you complain. I'm a Redditor and I take Joe Rogan's nootropics to maintain my super intelligence. These studies didn't look at nootropics. First of all, how did you find my videos? I mean, I'm proud of you, but usually your kind just stops in to call me a cunt and leaves a comment and then leaves. Uh, maybe you stick around long enough to downvote. Anyway, good job, you. Uh, second of all, you're wrong. The council did study nootropics, which I will get to in just a moment. First, let's talk about what are nootropics. Uh, a nootropic is any substance, drug or otherwise, that may improve cognition in humans. That is a big umbrella term that uh, can include just about anything, and there's no legal limit on its use. So anybody can produce a supplement and call it a nootropic for any reason. In fact, vitamins B, D, and E, and omega-3 fatty acids are all falsely sold as nootropics, despite mounting evidence that they do absolutely nothing for healthy people. And it's the for healthy people thing that I want to focus on next. There's a difference between taking a substance to fix something that's wrong with you and taking it to boost your already healthy body. Uh, and people get this shit confused all the time. Uh, it is confusing. Um, so let's get a good example. Vitamins, for instance. When I spent a winter in Buffalo, New York, my doctor ran some tests and he found that I was severely lacking in vitamin D. Please hold your sex jokes. But yes, he did prescribe me the D. Uh, it immensely helped my mood and my energy levels. 
And that's also what people find happens when they are low on B12, for instance, and they get a B12 shot. Instantly, they can think more clearly, they're happier, they have more energy. So once you're healthy, you might think, well, if it helped that much when I was sick, it's going to launch me into the stratosphere now that I'm healthy. So they buy B12 shots and vitamin D supplements, but that's not how the body works. You see, humans have big old brains, even Joe Rogan, and they use up a lot of energy. When you're sick, your body redirects energy to where it's needed most, uh, which can draw energy out of your brain, leaving you feeling slow and confused and depressed. Once that sickness is fixed by, say, getting a B12 shot, your body says, okay, let's get the brain back to normal. Getting more B12 isn't going to make your body start pumping more energy into your brain because that's not how that works. B12 isn't the energy. Just the energy was being sapped to make up for the B12 deficiency. Like a crutch. A crutch can help you move more quickly when your leg is broken. But once your leg is healed, using the crutch is just going to slow you down. Uh, and that's actually what a lot of research shows about some supplements. They can actually have the opposite of the intended effect. So yes, anyway, the council did look at nootropics, but they did not look at literally every possible thing that has been sold as such because there's so many. It would be impossible to cover in one meta-analysis. Uh, for instance, they didn't go into uh, rosatams, which are a type of drug often sold as nootropics. The science on them is nowhere near to being settled, but drugs like paracetam might hold a key towards preventing dementia, although studies show that it doesn't seem to help people who already have it. As an aside, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to the Cognitive Vitality website. It's run by the Alzheimer's Drug Discovery Foundation as a resource for collecting information on science-based research done on a lot of common nootropics. So if you have any questions about a particular substance, you can go there and you can see the most up-to-date information. Uh, so the council also didn't examine Joe Rogan's favorite nootropic, Alpha Brain. Uh, Rogan is part owner of a company called Onnit. It. It's a multi-million dollar corporation that produces this supplement called Alpha Brain. It costs about 90 cents a pill. It contains um, several different quote unquote nootropics like Bacopa, Cat's Claw, Hupertia serrata, and Oat Straw. Joe has gone on the record saying that Alpha Brain, quote, helps me form sentences better. Oh, man. What was he like before? Anyway, none of those ingredients is likely to boost your brain unless, of course, you're in recovery for a stroke and a doctor has prescribed one of them. Again, what's good for a sick person is not necessarily what's good for a healthy person. And research looking at health healthy people taking these supplements is pretty scarce. Oh, except for the double-blinded clinical trial that Alpha Brain touts on its sales pa page. Um, I took a look at it, and it's not super impressive. Uh, it only had 63 people in it total, meaning only 30 people took Alpha Brain. Uh, by the way, I'm pretty sure every time I say Alpha Brain, I get a little stupider. Jesus Christ. Um, the result of that study... Uh, those 30 people just barely were able to remember some words they were told by researchers, which is just one of the many tests that they tried on the subjects. It's too small of a sample size with too small of an effect on just one specific test out of all of them uh, to say anything about this study, except for it desperately needs more research. It's interesting because in looking at reviews of Alpha Brain, I saw a lot of People who clearly think of themselves as nerds and like science nerds, intellectuals, playing at science, uh, looking for the most effective stack of pills to achieve the best result. They've all been fooled by the same old alternative health industry that used to mostly just prey upon women. And it's the same sort of ingredients like cat's claw, for Christ's sake, and claims of ancient cure-alls, but it's been repackaged in this manly container with this whiff of scientific respectability. Might Alpha Brain make you feel something? Sure. It's not homeopathic. It does have active ingredients. But just like that bottle of ginkgo biloba, 
no one is overseeing what is actually inside of it and whether it's going to really do anything, let alone what it's going to do. Meanwhile, there are nootropics that actually are scientifically proven to work. Caffeine, for example. Uh, Caffeine has loads of positive side effects, including giving your brain a boost so long as you're taking more than your body is accustomed to. In fact, a randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled study found that caffeine was better at improving cognitive abilities than Caf Plus, a mix of three nootropics that were being sold mixed with the caffeine. Although I will mention that the council did study caffeine and found that for older adults, it didn't really do much. Here's another thing you can do, though, that will significantly improve your cognitive abilities. You can work out. Get some exercise, go for a long walk. You could also get a good night's sleep, uh, eat a healthy diet, limit the amount of meat and sugar you're consuming. I know, that's insane. What a stupid suggestion. Who has time for that? You know what? Let's just drop $80 on some pills instead. 